Vercel just launched a series of storage options that can change the way that we as developers build applications. Let's talk about it. So Vercel came out of kind of nowhere, at least as far as I'm concerned, and made a really, really huge announcement. I would have expected this to be in something more like one of their big uh, all day conferences where they announce different features and, and stuff like that. But this is huge and it just kind of came out. I saw it on a, on a Twitter thread, saw a lot of people talking about it, and I figured we would talk about it today as a quick reaction. So Vercel introduced storage on Vercel. And what this includes is three separate products that we'll talk about each individually for a second. This is Vercel KV, you're basically a key value store. It's a serverless Redis solution, easy, durable, powered by Upstash. Then there's Vercel Postgres. So as developers, Postgres is one of the databases that we often start with. It's one of the easier ones to get started with when we're learning and building applications and also super, super incredibly popular. So Vercel created a serverless SQL database built for the front end. It, it's really interesting the, the wording that they used of really targeting front end and server and how they kind of choose to throw those words in there. This is powered by Neon. And then there's also Vercel Blob, which is blob storage for storing raw binary data like uh, images, videos, stuff like that. And this is accessible at the edge, powered by Cloudflare R2. Now, the interesting thing about this is it feels like all of these, or it looks like all of these are built on existing products. So they reference again, uh, Vercel KV referencing Upstash, Postgres referencing Neon, Blob referencing Cloudflare R2, which I'm not even familiar with R2 specifically. Uh, but it seems like Vercel is kind of taking some of the amazing things that other companies have done and then bringing them into their own hosted version, their own hosted platform, which is Vercel. And that's really cool. So I wanted to think about like really quickly what, what problem they're solving for developers at a high level. So one of the things that we go to Vercel for hosting for is it's ease of use for hosting. You connect it to a repo, you set some environment variables, you push your repo, and it does continuous integration deployment, you have automatic deploys and previews and all these features and it's super, super easy. But you still had to go somewhere else to find a database. And that is not that big of a deal, but it is kind of annoying. And especially for beginners, you just want to kind of have everything in one place or maybe not even beginners, like just as developers, it's nice to have all your tools in one place if they make sense together. So what this means now is if you need key value storage, if you need uh, a Postgres database, if you need blob storage, you no longer have to go to outside resources, which means Vercel is really focusing on enabling developers to build full stack. Now we know Next.js as a framework enables you to do that. You know, API endpoints in Vercel, they have cron jobs, they have a lot of things that are now supporting this idea of doing stuff on the server. We'll talk more about React server components in a minute. And this is just another like backup to that of they're, they're enabling us as developers to do more for full stack. Now, I still think there's reasons to go and look for other database services. So there's things like Superbase and AppRite, which are two of my favorite backend as a service platforms. And they're kind of all encompassing. They have file storage, they have your database, they have real time updates, they have authentication. I love building with those because it takes care of so many of the things that I don't have to. So there's still a reason to go and look at AppRite and Superbase. There's still a reason to go and look at other database options outside of what Vercel is offering here for innovative features and two of my favorites, uh, Planet Scale is one that I worked at. So lots of innovative features there from a database perspective. And then one I've been super excited about recently is Zeta. So lots of innovations on how we work with database and integrate uh, those databases into our development workflow. I'll have a video on uh, how Zeta is doing that in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that. So there's still, there's still reasons to go and look for database options. But we no longer have to, like unless you specifically want to try one of those or take advantage of some of their features, now you have all of your database stuff kind of taken care of for you right inside of Vercel, which is really, really neat and really powerful. And I think going to continue to foster the developer ecosystem to look at Vercel as one of their primary options for deploying full stack web applications. So there's, there's several words in here that I think really jump out at me that I think are worth kind of calling out to you as well. So we talked about uh, we talked about, we mentioned the idea of React server components, but this idea of server first and edge first, you'll hear these words, server first, edge first, and then React server components. You'll hear this talked about in this article, and I think in Vercel's language, a ton. And so React server components, I think, is a really big example of this, is in Next.js, you now have the ability 
to use React server components with uh, Next.js 13, kind of the experimental React server components. And what this means is we're pushing more things to be done on the server. Now, Next.js has always had the ability, or not always, but has had for a long time, the ability to do statically rendered content and server-side rendered content. But React server components is taking it to another level where you're doing even more on the server and then streaming updates to the front end. And so this has obviously become a super big focus for Vercel and a really big, interesting use case and focus for developers going forward, because I think we're going to see this idea get picked up across the board, across frameworks and hosting providers. And Vercel is really pushing for that. So you'll see Edge, you'll see Server First, you'll see references to React server components. So let's go in really quickly and talk about just each of these three different items really quickly to give a few more details. So Vercel KV, this is a key value store. Um, and they talked about in here that Redis is one of the most common tools developers use for managing things like rate limiting, session management, management or application state. So oftentimes we use something like a key value store to manage state for an application if we need to, because we're oftentimes using serverless functions or we're using microservices, things don't actually inherently have state. So we can actually use a database, a Redis database in this case, as our state for our application. Now they specifically reference in here that this KV is serverless. I think that makes total sense um, that this is going to fit into the serverless ecosystem. And they also talk about, this is the, the really important part about this, is that you can write and read from Vercel's edge network in regions you specify. So one of the things that I would recommend people learn more about is the difference between just serverless and edge. And so serverless endpoints in uh, Vercel and other platforms are endpoints that you're not having to manage, you're not having to do anything for, but they still typically live in one data center, US East, West, APAC, whatever. Now with the edge, you've got these networks all over the world that I don't know how many there are in Vercel, I could go and look it up, but 15 or 20 probably, which means as you replicate data to your edge, as, as front ends or deployed applications are querying that data, they can now query data from a closer data center to them to get data that much faster. Because going from US to Japan to query data is a very slow process. And so in this case, it's saying you can read and write to Vercel's edge network, which I think now is just continuing to empower the progression of the edge and specifically in the Vercel platform. Now these uh, these embrace serverless, they uh, persist in memory and on disk by their by default. So they're super, uh, super durable is what they're talking about. So if you're querying stuff in memory, it's obviously going to be super fast. What happens if that gets wiped away? Well, it's going to be persistent on disk, load that stuff into memory and then still make it uh, fast to work with uh, going forward. And then we have uh, Postgres. So this is built on top of Neon and they advertise this as the first serverless SQL database built for the front end cloud. I think those are a, a, a lot of words really that don't mean a whole lot. There's lots of databases that claim themselves to be serverless databases built for front end. Planet Scale is one, Zeta is one, I think that fit all of those categories of being serverless, not having to manage infrastructure size of databases, like it's gonna take care of its, itself, it can scale by itself, and also built for the front end cloud. I imagine really what this means is you have the ability to do kind of transactional queries instead of longstanding query connections or database connections. Because when we have serverless functions, we can't have longstanding database uh, connections. We really wanna make like individual transactions to the database. And so I imagine that's what is happening here. And so they have a dedicated package for this. I think this is one of the benefits of these as well, being baked into Vercel, is you now have these uh, Vercel packages specifically for working with their databases which ideally are gonna be more optimal for working with them. So again, this example is referencing um, a server component and it's just writing a raw SQL query, getting back the data, and then now being able to reference that in the front end. So again, I think there's a lot of semi-fluffy words in here of serverless SQL database built for the front end cloud. I think this is kind of par for the course with a lot of these types of options now, but the fact that this is hosted directly on Vercel you have direct integration, you have your SDKs, really, really neat stuff. And it even talks about being seamlessly work with Next.js, App Router, React Server Components, and other frameworks. Again, I don't think this is them doing anything significantly special. I think this is just, just kind of doing what a lot of other databases are already doing, but it's baked into the platform. All right, so the last one is Vercel Blob. So this is file storage at the edge. Again, edge is key here because you get lots of benefits by being able to read write from the edge. 
So blob storage is images, it's video, it's PDFs, like whatever it is, CSVs, unstructured data, just regular like binary data, whatever you want. And so they've talked about, again, they have their SDK in here uh, and they have a very simple API where they talked about not having to create uh, like buckets of storage and all these things. You just basically pass it like a, a folder slash file string. So in this case, they're putting a new user image, user one, two, three, four, five inside of an avatars folder. So you just give it a put, you pass it uh, the name and the directory you want it in, you pass it the body. This is inside of an API route inside of Next.js. And then you uh, pass it how you want it to be accessible to the public or not. And you get back a URL. And that that's a very very concise way to do this. Again, the direct like integration with API endpoints and Next.js hosted on Vercel seems like a really great combination. So this I think is is really exciting. And this replaces, this is something that people often have to jump for outside services like Amazon F3, S3, not F3. Uh, or I mentioned earlier, like backend as a service platforms like um, AppWrite and Superbase come with file storage or blob storage as well. So this is now, if you're not doing that, now you have this accessible through uh, through this as well. Interesting that they they uh, have a couple of templates already for KV and for Postgres, and then specifically for Vercel Blob, this is in private beta rolling out soon. So if you want early access, there's a link in there. I also have an affiliate link for Vercel. If you are gonna do some hosting on Vercel and you want to use the affiliate link, I'll have a link to that in the description below. Absolutely don't have to, it's up to you. But I'm curious what you think about these uh, products coming to Vercel. I think this is huge. I think this is, symbolizing a significant focus and a ton of money and effort and time and development going into supporting full stack developers. It's not just about deploying your create react app. It's about full stack applications, all the tools that you need and the power and combination to do them in a way that makes the most sense for your application. So I'm particularly excited about this. I wonder, I assume you are too, maybe let me know what you think about this and what it means for your workflow going forward. Is this something that you'll use when you create applications? Let me know that in the comments below. Anyways, thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.